All right, wonderful. I think we are actually live. And this is the first time I'm going live in Zoom and in Facebook in my group at the same time. So it's taken a little coordination. And um, we'll just wait a few moments as people trickle in. I'm not going to wait very long because I know time is precious. So we're going to dive in very soon. Um, hello, Myla. I'm so, so, so happy to see you <laughs> at last. <laughs> it's really great to have you here. And it's been a pleasure connecting a little bit here and there. And I hope you, you know you got so much out of the program. So yeah, please like tell me anything later, you know, connect with me, send me feedback. Very, very happy to hear always about your experience. But thanks for showing up today. It's great. Uh, let's see anybody else who's here with your videos off I would be delighted to see you I'm usually going live and I only see my own face <laughs> so it's really nice to see others here as I do one of these intro workshops um, if you can't turn on your video no worries no problem I know sometimes people are in the car and then you know you don't even want to talk so that's totally fine whatever the reason is Welcome to everybody who's on Facebook. And I am going to pull that up right now so I can see comments and interact with you on Facebook too, if I'm able to multitask to that point. Um, there is my link. I keep moving stuff on my phone. There it is. Okay, and I need to welcome people at the same time, let them in. Okay, I just want to make sure we're going live and it's all working. Uh, bear with me. Yes, excellent. I see it's working and we can see people here. Hello, Mary, Cami, Timothy. Great to see that you're here. First thing, I really want to know where everybody is. So, and I do want to use the chat. Usually I don't have the chat. Um, I can't always look at the chat in the middle of the workshop, obviously, but I invite you to use the chat amongst yourselves. And that way I can kind of go back and forth between Facebook and um, Zoom. But tell me where you're from. Stick it in the chat so we can see where people are. I'm guessing Myla is not actually in Maine. But you never know, <laughs> or Oregon or somewhere with a lighthouse. <laughs> if you want to put in the chat, I would like love to know where everybody is. And hello, Judith. Great to see you here. Wonderful. Uh, Mary's in Wisconsin. Myla is in Washington, D.C. My aunt lives in, my aunt and my cousin live in Washington. And Tristan is in Brazil, Campinas near Sao Paulo. Wonderful. And let me see. Okay. So we have people coming in from all over. I'm sure people will keep coming in. Hi, Mary from Hatfield. Mary Hammer. Great to have the two Marys here. <laughs> Wonderful. And again, if you're just joining in and you're on Zoom, please do turn on your video if you feel comfortable doing so, because I love to see you and interact with you. Okay. Um, hi, Stephanie. So happy you're here. Oh, there you are. Hi. Somehow, how did I know you were in your car? <laughs> Great to have you here. Wonderful. Okay, so let's dive in. This is all about actually how to save time and energy. So I don't want to waste your time here at the beginning of this workshop. And I'm really hoping to give you a lot of useful tips, practical advice, and things that you can actually do to help yourself during the holiday season. So by the end of this workshop, my hope is that you will be using what I'm teaching you today and test it out so that you can find the value in it for yourself. Some of you know me, some of you have no idea what I do or who I am. So just really quickly, um, you pronounce my name. It's kind of hard, but it's Spanish. <laughs> Jennifer Roy Francoli. And by the way, um, that's all my ex-husband's name. It's not my maiden name. And <laughs> it was just easier to keep it that way. And kind of nice. Roy Francoli, my kids have that name. I have that name. Anyway, I am a musician, professional violinist, have been my entire life. And I'm a coach for musicians of all kinds, all instruments, all levels. And my specialty is teaching musicians how to really be themselves 
and share who they are in mind, body, soul, and spirit through their music, free of pain, stress, and excess tension. That's a tall order. As a musician, I'm sure you know how challenging it can be to get on a stage or in front of a jury, or even sometimes in front of your students if you're a teacher, or in front of your teacher if you're a student. <laughs> you know, it can be really challenging to really connect to the deep love of music that you have and be able to share that freely and openly without fear, without all the extra stuff and tension that can get in the way that actually blocks your being able to communicate with the people that you wanna share your music with. So my specialty is helping musicians recognize how they're getting in the way, how the tension, the anxiety, the fears, the self-doubt is getting in the way, and then sharing very practical, simple tools that you practice on an everyday basis for just a few minutes to be able to let go of those things that you, you're unconsciously doing to prevent your best performance and to heal if your body's in pain. So I am a certified Alexander Technique teacher and I've been practicing Alexander Technique since 2003. So I just realized yesterday that I'm coming up on, actually, yeah, I'm coming up on 20 years of being in the Alexander world, which is kind of exciting. I started teaching in 2007. I have two certifications and I've spent more than seven years um, learning something called Primal Alexander online with my partner, Mia Morales. He's the creator of this amazing way of learning Alexander technique without touch. And it's brilliant and it's the best thing ever, which is why I don't even use my hands anymore because it's so empowering for my students to know how to do it for themselves. That's what I wanted when I started learning the Alexander technique. And so I am absolutely totally consumed with <laughs> delight to be able to share that with my students. And I'm gonna share some of that with all of you today. Um, I think that's enough about me. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to my website. It's www.artoffreedom.me. So that's dot M-E. You can find out all kinds of, of stuff about what I do and how um, this work can help musicians over there. And there's a blog with lots of articles and things there too. Lots of good stuff. And my YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so diving into what this is going to do for you. Let's first talk a little bit about like why I'm doing this workshop. It's about holiday overwhelm. And I, I'm so sick of holiday overwhelm. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about the holidays. You can love them or hate them or both. Yeah, Stephanie's got a thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, we all have feelings one way or the other, and lots and lots of mixed feelings about the holiday season. And because we're all musicians, I, of course, I'm putting this into a performance um, context as well, because many of us, not all of us perform, but many of us do. And I'll just say, in my lifetime of performing over the holidays, I must have played hundreds of messiahs <laughs> and like multiple messiahs every season and gigs and shows. And then there, there is the endless work to do if you're a teacher with student recitals, getting everybody ready, um, dealing with just everything, all the goodies, the food, the organization, your family, stressful relationship stuff. There's just so much stuff that we deal with all year long, but it all kind of comes together and creates this mess for many of us around the holidays. So first of all, I want to check in with everybody who's here watching on Zoom and on Facebook. Could you please put into the chat, you know, what is the most, it, like the thing that gets you, you know, Stephanie's driving, you don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to do anything here, but I actually did figure out this poll function. And so I'm going to put a poll into the Zoom group. And if you're in, in, on Facebook, these are the options and you can just type in, you know, what do you find hardest about the holidays and your choices? You could put in anything, of course, but your choices on the poll here are 
Number one, stress, tension, and or anxiety. Number two, managing difficult emotions. Number three, family or other relationship stuff. Number four, feeling good about myself and my music, like my performance, my actual performance. And last but not least, too many responsibilities. Okay, and I did make it so that you can choose more than one of these because I doubt that any of you just has one of these, <laughs> right? If you're like most people. Um, so yeah, that's and that's what's popping up in the poll here on Zoom. I'm seeing like 50 percent. Um, yeah, I'm seeing that the, the top three are stress, tension, and anxiety, managing difficult emotions, and feeling good about yourself when you use it. And then next comes family relationship stuff and too many responsibilities. So just in my experience, these are major issues. And what happens when you have these things going on? They affect your whole self. They dampen your enthusiasm. So they make it harder for you to actually enjoy yourself during the holidays. And isn't that really what they're about? Yeah, aren't holidays time for you to you know, enjoy yourself and the people around you and share you know, tidings of joy and you know, peace on earth, right? That's what we all talk about. That's what all the greeting cards say. That's what all the signs in the stores say. They say peace and joy on earth. But how much of your day are you actually feeling that compared to how much of your day are you worrying or feeling stressed or running around like a chicken with your head cut off because you can't do what you want to do, right? So we don't need to go more into the problems um, and why this workshop is happening, but I do want to reassure you that there are ways to overcome all this. And I'm hoping that this workshop is gonna give you some really, really useful ways to think about things differently. So you can experience yourself differently during the holidays. And this is not just about the holidays, of course, this is about life. This is about 365 days a year. How can you think differently, move differently, manage your feelings and emotions differently so that you can react less to things that are startling, scary, difficult, frustrating, sad, and really choose how you want to experience yourself and your day. Choose how you want to show up every morning. Choose how you want to show up for other people, but putting yourself first. And we're going to, that's a big part of what we're going to talk about now. So I teach something called the Art of Freedom Method for Conscious Living and Masterful Artistry. This is my unique system that I've put together over years that brings together my life experience as a musician in a musical family, my lifetime of interest in meditation and um, contemplative spiritual practices, and obviously the Alexander technique, which like I said before, I teach without touch so that I can help people do it for themselves. And my students learn how to start doing things for themselves really literally on day one. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that today. <laughs> so the Art of Freedom Method has five life pillars. And I wanna sh share with you how you can use these life pillars during the holiday season to reduce your stress and your overwhelm and lift up your spirits, okay? So before I go into all of this that I've prepared for today, I wanna actually give you my cheat sheet, <laughs> right? So I put together, it, I printed it out and it turns out to be like four pages of stuff that I've put together. I want you to have it. So before I forget, I am going to hop over and grab the link for you um, so that you can request your copy and get it. 
um, I'm putting this into the chat on Zoom right now. And I am now hopping over to Facebook so that I can give it to everybody here on Facebook as well, if I can do that. <laughs> I'm hopping into the comment section under what I think is the live thing there. I see Mary here. Wonder yes, good. So I think you have just gotten my cheat sheet opt-in there. You do need to give me your email address because I made this um, a public workshop, so anybody could sign up and join. Um, so I want to make sure that you know I know who's getting this. Obviously, so I will. You will automatically get this as soon as you sign up. It's all automated, and you will get it in your inbox. Check your spam folder if it's not showing up within a few minutes. Um, if you're actually here live, don't bother doing that right now. You can get it later. Actually. Let me take that back. Do bother, do it right now. <laughs> do it right now because you know you might have to leave early or something. Hope you don't, but you know, if you have to, that's life. We're busy, that's the point, okay? So grab your cheat sheet right now. And um, you'll also get a replay of this. Uh, there is a replay that's gonna show up in the, the Facebook group. I know so many people are busy today in the morning, so. Um, lots of people end up watching the replays, and that's totally fine with me. And then you, know, you can get the cheat sheet as well. Okay, so the five life pillars of the Art of Freedom method are purpose, mind, body, spirit, and artistry. So it's your whole self combined with your music, your artistry, your creativity. Okay, and spirit is in there. But you don't have to believe in God to love this work and use it. I don't care what word you use for spirit. I really, truly don't. You can use the word love if you prefer. Everybody that I know can identify with love and love in your heart and you want love in your life. So if that's easier for you than the word spirit, fine. If you want to use creative spirit or source or the great mystery, I love that one. You know, you can use God too. Whatever word works for you, this is a universal method. This is for everybody. And um, I just want to make that clear, okay? So it is about love and it's about connecting to love for yourself and sharing love of yourself with everyone else because you love them too, right? Ultimately, there's no difference. But you've got to start here with yourself and you need to start with pillar number one, really, which is purpose. Okay, so how to get centered and why to get centered. If you're going crazy during the holiday season, you're not centered. If you're getting thrown off by just, you know, one more thing going wrong one day, if that's throwing you off and, you know, causing you to have a breakdown, <laughs> you are not centered. We talk a lot about getting grounded and centered. I don't talk a lot about being grounded because people tend to kind of get heavy when they do that, even if it feels good. So forget about getting grounded or aligned. Um, what about being centered though? Okay, so if you want to get out of the overwhelm, which is like a storm going on around you and in your head, you need to come back to the center, the eye of the storm. And it's interesting that we call it the eye of the storm. That means there's there's like a vision kind of eye, but there's also the personal eye and um, that universal central eye, capital I, the self. You got to come back to your self, come back to the center of yourself, meaning the center of like center your mind, calm down the craziness in your, your head just for a moment come back, stop thinking, come back to your body, feel, be with yourself for a moment, connect to that spirit or love. And if you can't, that's okay. Just have an intention. That's enough. That's number one purpose, right? And then, so those four have nothing to do directly with your music. The fifth pillar is about artistry. Okay. So we add that in because you actually 
obviously need skills to play your instrument well. That's why you take lessons. That's why you know you you read books or whatever you do to learn more about the art of being a musician and sharing your love of music with others. So there are skills that you need to learn and you can work on your artistry for the rest of your life, as you know, because Alls was in his 90s and people asked him or someone asked him why he kept practicing. And he said, well, I think I'm finally getting somewhere. <laughs> I love that. One. I love that. There's always more, right? So over the holiday season, if you're stressed, your artistry might be the last thing you're thinking about because you just want to get everything done. You want to show up to your gigs on time and play as well as you possibly can. But maybe you're not really worried or caring so much about improving your technique, right? Or maybe you have no time to practice. And But don't worry about that. Whatever you've learned is already in you. Okay, and you can kind of coast on that. Be okay with not being perfect. You know, not being a perfectionist is really important if you want to lower your stress levels. But that's another topic for another day, the big one. Okay, so let's go a little deeper into each of these five pillars. And there are some questions that you can ask yourself to go with these pillars. And these are all on your cheat sheet. So don't, you don't have to worry about trying to remember them now. You can pick them up um, using that link that I put in the comments, okay? Number one is purpose. So you wanna keep coming back to yourself to remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. If you're running to the grocery store three times a day because you keep forgetting stuff for the holiday meal, <laughs> right? you might not really be thinking about what you're doing on earth, or you might really be thinking about what you're doing on earth, right? But you do actually need to come back to your center and remind yourself, what is, what is my purpose? Like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this holiday meal? Oh, it's because I actually want to enjoy being with my family and I like having good food for everyone. Or you might realize that you don't need the fifth cake or you don't need the appetizers and the having a perfect meal is really not so important, right? So you need to get in, in touch with your own values and your purpose and what is deeply important and meaningful to you under the surface, not just what you think you should do, right? And not just because you someone else has trained you to think you should do X, Y, and Z. You know, a lot of holiday recitals have a reception afterwards. And if you've been doing it for 10 years the same way every year, you might think that you have to do it the same way again. And maybe there's just too much involved and maybe you can cut some stuff out if it's too much, right? So that's the purpose, you know, why? Why am I doing this? What do I really want? These are things that it would be worth paying attention to and asking yourself every day, all year long. <laughs> and if you do that, you're actually ready for the holiday season before December 1st, right? But now we're in the middle of it. And all it takes is a moment to stop and check in with yourself. And whatever you come up with is great. And then ask yourself again tomorrow or before you go to sleep, when you wake up, why? Why am I doing this? Okay, it's so important to claim and own your desires and not do things out of obligation, responsibility, or because somebody else has trained you to, to expect that. Because that's a recipe for conflict inside of yourself. There's resistance there when it's not actually coming from you. And that resistance increases physical tension, makes it harder for your fingers to move when you're playing your instrument, right? And it makes you, it just harder to think, makes it harder for your body systems to work. Your thinking is less organized because it's, you're not in alignment, you're not actually in integrity with who you really are. 
And again, you may not know what you really want. It took me years of asking myself this question when I finally realized that it was important and it was okay to ask myself what I want. And I'm not exaggerating. It, it was really hard to answer that question for a long time, but I kept asking it. And finally, you know, little by little, it got easier. So if this is a really confronting, difficult question for you to ask yourself, what do I want? It's okay. Just ask it and let it go. Don't overthink it. Don't force it. Just have the intention to keep touching that thought, coming back to it gently whenever you remember. Journaling is really helpful, but some people hate journaling. I still recommend having something like a little notebook or a file on your phone or something where you can just add little bullet points, just little things that come up, little reminders, and maybe check in on that every day. Find a journal app, make it easy. <laughs> Whatever makes it easy. I'm all about making everything you do in life and music easier, simpler, easier, and therefore much more efficient, effective, and super high quality. This is not about slacking off and just doing the doing the minimum because minimum because we're lowering our standards. No, this is about actually raising your standards but raising them in a way that is in, in integrity and doesn't force things. It's not self-abusive. Pushing yourself around is self-abusive. Took me a long time to use those words, by the way. I don't use them lightly. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on to number two. Purpose, the, sorry, life pillar number two is your mind. So you want to start or continue getting pretty good at observing your own thoughts. Get to know your mind and realize you are actually more than your thoughts, right? You're more than your thoughts. You're more than your body. <laughs> you're like the whole thing. And you actually can observe your thoughts. That is, that is a, a birthright of the human race, right? We have this incredible meta function, metacognition, where we can actually observe ourselves as if from outside of ourselves, okay? I'm not claiming in any way to know more than the tiniest little bit of neuroscience, <laughs> but I'm sure there are a lot of really good reasons for you know, how the brain works. Actually, to be honest, I don't really care because knowing the minimum of this kind of stuff, I know what's practically useful and what works. <laughs> That's enough for me. Like, I'm like, who cares about the rest of the fluff? You know, all those facts, details, all that stuff is fluff. It's, just, I don't care. It's not helping me to have more knowledge about those things. I want the kernel of what is effective. And that makes my life simpler and easier. Just a little tidbit, okay? So as you observe your mind, observe your thoughts, ask yourself, in fact, do it right now, everybody, as you're here, ask yourself, where is my attention? And Stephanie's driving, so I hope it's on the road. <laughs> and you know that you can still have yourself primary as you watch the road and steer and all the things that you're doing. <laughs> right, so most of you are watching a screen or listening to an audio. Where is your attention mostly right now? Is it outside of yourself on something out there, like a screen or something or my words? Or is it on you and how you're experiencing those things, how you're taking those things in? Talking about how you take things in, I just admitted somebody into a meeting. Appropriate. <laughs> So where is your attention? Where is your main focus? There is zero judgment on this, but you want to start remembering to do this, like checking in to ask yourself, where am I? <laughs> where, you know, what am I paying attention to? What, what is important to me now as proven by where my intention is? And is that really in alignment with my purpose? I don't know. 
By the way, I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer. And the more you do this work, the more you might bump up against what I call the land of I don't know. And so much of the art of freedom method is bumping up against not knowing and learning to be okay with that and actually discover that it's an adventure to step into the land of I don't know. And when you choose to take it with that attitude as excitement and like, wow, I wonder what I'm going to discover about myself today. Oh, I just got really jealous. Oh, great. I discovered that I have that in me. Oh, I just got really scared thinking about my upcoming performance. I can't believe I'm going to see that failed member. Oh, I'm getting really nervous. Just observing yourself like this is a hugely helpful skill, but we don't remember to do it because we're so much focused on what's out there trying to manipulate and control everything and do everything right and get it all done. You need to recognize your habits. Hi, Marion. Great to have you here. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> yeah, so we're we're you learn how to observe and be curious about these specific things. So, so far we've talked about just the first two of the life pillars of the art of freedom method, purpose and mind and observing those things. And by the way, if you're just joining on Zoom or in the Facebook group, um, make sure you grab your cheat sheet that goes with this workshop. There's a link in the chat. There's a link in the comments. Do that now, okay? Because sometimes people have to leave early you know, or you lose your connection or something. Make sure you grab your cheat sheet because it has a basic summary of what I'm talking about here and more, okay? As time goes fast, I am never able to do everything I intend to do. <laughs> My students know that. <laughs> we always go over. Actually, that's not true. I'm changing that. I've many times now, I've stopped on time. So I, it is possible to change. Okay, let's go back to the five pillars. Okay, the third one is body. Listen to your body. I'm gonna say that again. Listen to your body. There is infinite wisdom in your body and it's trying to tell you things all the time. But if you're racing around, stressed out, full of anxiety and tension, what your body's trying to tell you may kind of go by unnoticed. You might ignore it. And, and that's a really big cause of physical pain, by the way. Very often, pain starts out as just a small little discomfort because your body is like, hey, hello, you need to do something a little different. And by the way, you need to think a little differently, which is the main cause, right? Because everything starts over here. So your body gives you little nudges, like little back pain, a little neck pain here. Your arm hurts a little after a long rehearsal. Your body is talking to you and giving you very important information. If you don't listen to it, it's going to get louder. It's like that little kid tugging on your, your sleeve. Like whining a little bit. If you ignore it too long, it's going to get louder and it's going to end up in a temper tantrum right? That's pain. So prevent the pain by listening to your body. Heal the pain you already have by listening to your body. It's not going to go away usually right away, but I tell you, my students who come to me with pain, they notice changes very quickly. And depending on how long they've had the pain, sometimes they've had it for decades, and depending on lots of factors, the pain could take weeks to go away, it could take months to go away, but everybody notices an improvement because they, and then they, they know what they need to do differently, how they need to think differently to continue that process of improvement steadily over time on their own. A lot of my students come to me because they have tendonitis, back pain, carpal tunnel, neck pain, um, all kinds of stuff going on with their bodies. They also come to me for performance anxiety. Some people come to me because they just want to get really better at their violin or their piano or their uh, whatever, their vibraphone. I had a vibraphone student recently, and it was the most unusual instrument, I think. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. So everybody wants to play their, their instruments better, right? You want to improve your skills, but it's really hard to do that if you don't realize that you have excess tension in your system. And I have known lots of excellent professional musicians who are making the, they're playing so much more difficult for themselves because they're not aware of the tension they carry around when they're playing. I can remember, I can see one person in my head right now. I was working with this person full of tension. And this person told me, I don't have any tension when I play, but my intonation is really bad. Can you help me with my intonation? And it was only a one, one time, you know, free lesson I was giving a colleague. <laughs> so, so I couldn't exactly you know, go very far, but it was kind of sad to, you know, hear someone who had really visible problems. They were really obvious to me as a specialist, right? Not obvious to anybody else, by the way but really obvious to me that this person was using way too much effort to play the instrument. And their intonation was totally inconsistent all over the place. And it was causing him so much stress and discomfort on a regular, like daily basis. So the focus was all on the intonation, but the intonation was just a, a result. The cause was the tension in his body, but not even that, the, the cause of the tension in his body was the way he was thinking. And he was completely oblivious to that and sadly not very interested in learning more about that because it really could have helped him. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Um, anyway, moving on, you've got to listen to your body. Ask yourself, what am I feeling? And what's my body trying to tell me? Pillar number four, Allow your creative spirit to flow. Pillar number four is spirit. And like I said earlier, that can be creative spirit for you. It, use whatever word you want. You can use the word God. You can word, use the word love. You can word, use the words, um, some of my favorites, great mystery. That's a, a Native American word, two words, like great mystery. We don't know, but there's something bigger and mysterious that. Um, flows through us that allows us to carry incredible emotions through music to heal and uplift ourselves and other people. It, music is so powerful, isn't it? It's amazing. But it's kind of dead and lifeless if there's no life in it, right? That life with a capital L is another word you could use for creative spirit, right? Love, life, spirit source, great mystery, God, whatever it is, I don't care, <laughs> whatever works for you. So questions you can ask yourself, am I letting go and allowing my creativity to flow or am I blocking it? Am I, here's an interesting one I just came up with today, actually, as I was thinking about this. Am I being aggressive or receptive? Let that one sink in for a moment. Am I being aggressive? Another word for that could be pushy. <laughs> or am I being receptive? Am I open to receiving and accepting whatever comes my way? The good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly, the hard, the difficult, the easy. Am I open to allowing spirit to help me? that spirit inside, outside, everywhere. And again, whatever word you wanna use, love. Am I getting in touch with the love inside of me? And I'm, am I open to letting that come through me and through my music? So the last pillar, the life pillar is artistry. Appreciate your artistry. Do I appreciate what I've learned and what I can do? So much of the time we're running around stressed during the holidays because there's so much we have to do and so much we haven't done yet, right? <laughs> how many of you, let me see a show of hands. How, much, how many of you have a list of things you should do over the next few days for today or this month. Tristan's got a list. 
Myla doesn't have a list. Okay. Is that a good thing or is that a helpful thing or is that a stressful thing that you don't have a list? <laughs> right. It can go either way, right? <laughs> Sometimes you can be really free because you have no list. Sometimes you can be totally overwhelmed because it's all up here and you're trying to organize it all in your head and you can't keep track of things. So you're going crazy and having a list would be a really helpful tool. <laughs> right. So you can have a lot of ideas about lists, good and bad, but if you do have a list, it's usually of things you haven't done. I did have a friend, I do have a friend, and in the past we talked about having a done list. And we actually did that for a while. It was really enlightening. Instead of having a to-do list also, or instead, usually also, because you kind of need the to-do list. <laughs> but what if you had a done list? And you list the things you've done and you actually get to celebrate that you did them. How often do you check things off your list and you're already looking at the next one? You're already looking at what you have to do tomorrow or next week or, oh my God, there's so much left to do by the end of the year. And you haven't even appreciated how much you've already done. We do this as musicians a lot. We tend to think, oh, I'll never be good enough. I'm never going to learn this thing. I'm never going to get to the level that so-and-so is. I practice so much. That person just tosses, tosses everything off and it's so easy. How come I can't do what they can do? I'm just as good as they are, but I'm never going to be able to play like they do. I have to do X, Y, Z. I have to practice more. Okay, I have to practice more. By the way, that's not true, but that's, again, another time, another time, another place, another lecture, right? You probably don't have to practice more. You have to practice smarter, which is something I teach my students. <laughs> but anyway, imagine if you could, instead of going quickly into the next things you have to do, trying to catch up, what if you just stopped? Like right now, everybody, please do this with me. You're all here with me. Can you just stop for a moment? Think about one or two things that you have been able to do today. And that, you know, you, you did. Even if it's something like eat a healthy breakfast, maybe you took the time to eat something healthy. That is not a small thing. For some people, that's a huge thing because they keep forgetting to eat breakfast, right? <laughs> so if you managed to give yourself a healthy breakfast today, could you please just like give yourself a pat on the back and, and appreciate that you took care of yourself, you know, for a few minutes, right? If you got up out of bed today, even though you didn't feel like it because you were really tired, my love, <laughs> That's not a small thing. Imagine if you hadn't gotten up and imagine if you had let your mind wander to all kinds of dark, uncomfortable places and you just lay there in bed thinking about horrible things. You didn't do that. Could you pat yourself on the back and say, I didn't want to get up, but I did. And if you did want to get up, I was fortunate enough to wake up at 5 a.m. this morning and I actually wanted to get up and I felt good. So I'm like, I got up and I did a ton of stuff that I wanted to do, including the healthy breakfast <laughs> and planning this workshop because I always do everything at the last minute because <laughs> I know that I can, by the way, from practice. Um, yeah, so really appreciate you all play instruments. Can you appreciate the number of music lessons you took in your life, have taken? The number of hours that you've spent practicing over a lifetime? Can you appreciate your technique, where it is now? How much you can do that you can play through a piece of music, even if it's twinkle twinkle, right? If you can perform in front of people, that's pretty amazing. Even if you get anxious, the fact that you can do it is pretty amazing. 
we've got to remember the basic stuff and there's so much more than the basic that we can do. Can you take a moment and actually feel in your body the gratitude? Not just think the gratitude. Not just, don't leave it up here. Let it sink in, literally. Can you thank yourself and your body and your mind and your whole system for being so well organized that you're able to do anything in this world, let alone play your instrument? If you could really feel the gratitude for that every day, you'd probably have a lot less stress. And it doesn't take long. You can do this in 10 seconds. You can do this when you're pulling up to your gig and you've just parked and you're late. You can still stop for two seconds and say thank you to yourself for getting you there, right? And to thank your whatever you want to thank for getting you there safely, right? <laughs> There's so much and we forget how important that attitude of gratitude is. And it's not, you know, you hear that a lot. You see little memes all over the place, it, but it's not just words. Usually, sadly, it is just words, just like the peace and joy over the holidays are usually just words. You've got to let these words have meaning and sink into your body. We usually have the mind and the body kind of separate, like they don't interconnect and they don't talk to each other. <laughs> Like there's this internal war going on where you're all up in your head and out there or you're stuck in your body feeling horrible or whatever. You need to integrate it all. And that's what the Art of Freedom Method is all about. And Primal Alexander, this hands-free way of teaching Alexander technique, it's all about bringing your whole self to your experience so that you can do whatever you're doing with full integrity and feel what you feel and actually live your life. You can't really feel joy or peace during the holidays if you don't know how to embody that, okay? So there are specific skills that I teach that are actually super simple and very fast, quick to learn, that help you with this, help you integrate everything. So I wanna just, um, spend a few minutes doing this with you. Okay. Again, it's so simple. And Kay is, is a longtime student of mine. You've done this before, right? <laughs> so it's going to be very familiar to some of you who are watching. We're going to do something called Ima. And Ima means now in Japanese. This is a, a very simple little practice that I, I like to call it a pre awareness etude. There are dozens of awareness etudes that I teach my students. They are Primal Alexander and Art of Freedom awareness etudes. And you start learning them at the beginning of any of my programs. But this is actually a pre-etude, which is kind of a prerequisite to be able to do the awareness etudes. So as you're sitting or standing or whatever you're doing, because I can't see everybody, <laughs> As you are here now, take your attention back to yourself. So if you're watching the screen, just let yourself look elsewhere for a moment and bring your attention back to you. And ask yourself, what am I noticing about my body right now? But just listen to your body for a moment and see what shows up. And I'm so glad for the people who were able to be visible today so that I can actually, this is why I wanted to do this on Zoom, I wanted to interact and actually, you know, do this with you and get your, your feedback. So those of you who are watching, can anybody share what is your body telling you? Like, what are you feeling in your body right now? Myla, what's coming up for you? Could be anything. Right? If you feel comfortable unmuting, just what shows up for you? And I'm sitting on a hard chair. <laughs> okay, great. It's like anything that happens, anything you notice is great. You're sitting on a hard chair. How does your butt like that? <laughs> is it uncomfortable or does it love that hard chair? 
can you unmute? <laughs> this is a serious question. <laughs> I, no, it's it's uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, good. So there's kind of a little discomfort there on your seat. Yep. <laughs> okay, great. Excellent. But I and I and I noticed that earlier, and I was like, you know what? Let me just live with that, though. Let me just yeah. Instead of changing it, let me just live with that for a bit. <laughs> Yes, Myla has done some work with me. She took my intro program very recently. And so you know that you need to think that you can think differently and that it's not a good idea to stay stuck with an uncomfortable feeling. So that's that's great. <laughs> Give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> look what you look at what you can do. <laughs> right? Good. Anybody else? What are you feeling? Tristan, we've never worked together before. What are you noticing? Well, I'm sitting here and my head is somewhat forward. So I guess this primary control, I, I've, I've got it. I'm I'm certainly off uh, center. I mean, I'm, my head mm -hmm. is forward. I'm, I'm, so that's, I'm also my breathing. So not to talk too much because I'm, well, I'm kind of an Asperger. I don't stop. <laughs> Once I yeah. get me started, I don't stop. So <laughs> kind of autistic spectrum. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's a great observation. Person. Can you just give me a word on how that's affecting your breathing? Because that's really interesting. Uh, well, I, I realized, uh, I mean, I, I started trying to feel myself better. And then I, I felt that I, my, my breathing was kind of hampered by this forward hit uh, like this tension in your neck you're talking about yeah yeah i feel like well there's the diaphragmatic uh breathing right at the point uh, and uh, more in the chest so i think it's kind of strange but i i can't tell this really precisely to you i can't i, I just feel something general related to my breathing and yeah. my head being somewhat forward excellent yeah, that's... thank you that's really great so yes it's like noticing and, and you've studied some Alexander techniques, so you know about how important it is to recognize what's going on, you know, with your body, right? And especially if you notice that you're pulling forward, that's really good observation. And linking that up with how it's hampering your breathing. Excellent. Most people are not aware of those things. But with training and deciding to focus on different things. You can train your brain to filter things differently. <clears throat> and you'll start to notice things that are more useful that you can use and think differently in response to them. Okay, great. So most people, when they check in with themselves, not everyone and not all the time at all, but most people, most of the time, when they pause to do EMA and they redirect their attention to how they're feeling in the body, a little discomfort or you know something shows up that's just a little off, all right? So you kind of know things aren't 100% perfect, free and open, and <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's normal. Well, I'm not sure I should use the word normal. It's extremely common. Let's say 99% of the time people do come back to themselves and notice that they've been a little off somehow. There's a little discomfort. Great. If you notice that, again, celebrate. Be really happy. Pat your, I'm doing a lot of back patting today, right? <laughs> like, please, everybody, you can, you can do this for yourselves, right? It's a good habit. <laughs> Right, exactly. Tristan, go for it. <laughs> yes, and love yourself. Hug yourself. Yeah, these are good things. Smile at yourself. Yes, no, but seriously, be happy if you notice anything about yourself. Most of the time we're on autopilot. We're functioning out there and we forget ourselves. When you forget yourself, you forget who you are and you're not present. When you are not present to who you are, you're blocking your life force, literally. You are hampering your breathing like Tristan put so well. And your breathing is really intimately connected to your life force, right? Now, talking about breathing, though, it, with the work that I do, we pretty much ignore the breathing because, you know, as soon as I talk about breathing, I'm sure everybody here listening that your breathing has changed, right? Because, you know, it's in that fine line between being able to control it and being automatic. So 
whatever we do with our thinking alters our breathing. So we use our thinking for everything and, and, and everything else just follows, right? So if you want to breathe better or breathe more deeply because your shallow, your breath is too shallow, all those things that people talk about. If you know that there's a problem with your breathing or your posture, by the way, they go together. It's okay. Celebrate and leave yourself alone for a change. Okay. Don't like Myla said perfectly. Don't try to fix yourself. Don't try to change yourself. This flies in the face of all the self-help books, right? Not all of them, but most of the stuff out there is all about self-improvement and be better, do better. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, forget all that. Can you actually just be with yourself? Like right now, can you just pause for a moment? Be happy you're on earth. And if you can't be happy you're on earth, just be on earth, right? <laughs> just just be here and just notice that you're here right start here and then kind of look around this is the key to dealing with holiday stress and overwhelm it may seem completely unrelated but it is absolutely the key when you're running around going crazy planning your student recitals and trying to get to those gigs and, and, and line them up because you're, you're double booked on one day, it, all that kind of stuff that can drive you crazy or dealing with family stuff, which is sometimes the hardest. When you're in that mode, the best thing you can do is notice that you're in that mode, pause and just be with yourself for a moment and stop doing you can still be driving as you're doing i mean as sorry i said it backwards you can still be driving to your gig you can still be you know running because you're late for the performance <laughs> you can still move your body quickly but be calm on the inside and that has everything to do with how you're thinking and how you respond to the stimuli out there okay Alexander said, and I love this quote, said, mine is a method for the control of human reaction. So it all comes down to how you react to what's going on outside of you first. Like if you're out there, you're going to notice what's going on outside of there, uh, outside of you, right? I have to get there on time. Oh, red light, <laughs> right? You have to notice that stuff, but notice how you're reacting internally to that stuff. And then notice how you are reacting to your emotions. If you're stressed, do you feel bad about yourself being stressed? Like you shouldn't be stressed? That's not helpful. If you're depressed and the holidays make you sad, it is so good to know that. Can you just pause and feel that and not judge yourself for being sad or angry or upset? even if you don't have a good reason, right? Or if you do have a good reason, can you just allow that and not feel like you should be over it? Can you just be with it for a moment? That's the very first step, Ima. And that's actually, I've only given you part of Ima because the next part, once you've been with the discomfort right now, can you actually find a place in your body that feels okay? that's relatively comfortable, that's relatively quiet or easy. Nothing much is going on. For people who are really stressed or in a lot of pain, I sometimes offer go-to places like your earlobes or your hair or your eyebrows. There's nothing much happens there. <laughs> Unless you're having a bad hair day, right? <laughs> you don't feel anything in your hair. Not much goes on at the tip of your nose or your earlobes or your toenails, right? You might have to start there. Start where it's easy. Can you connect to ease in one of those places right now? Pick one. Can you notice how easy it is for your earlobe to be your earlobe? Like it doesn't have to do anything to be an earlobe. 
Okay. Can you now find another place in your body that's just doing its thing, not complaining, it's just there? Okay, can you play can you find a place like that? Can you unmute for a moment? Where are you noticing a bit of easing in yourself? My thighs. Lovely. So everybody, when you notice a place like that, relative easing, you just stay with it for a wait, wait, okay, wait. <laughs> so you stay with the thighs or wherever you're noticing it for a moment. You appreciate it. Now, okay, where else do you seem to be using a bit? Is there somewhere else in your body? That's right. You're getting hey, easier. Jim. Good. Yeah, I saw you even getting easier as you were just asking the question and wondering. Where else? Is there another place? Tristan's getting easier. Excellent. It's working. My wrists. Yes, your wrists, good. Yeah, and Myla's getting easier over there. She's She knows what she's doing. <laughs> it looks to me anyway. Is that your experience, Myla? Are you noticing a little bit of easing? Just up for I'm you. paying attention at least. <laughs> yeah, well, let's pause for a moment. So as you're paying attention, what are you noticing, Myla? It's interesting to actually identify as opposed to the, let me just ask it and have it go, but to actually put an answer to it. Yeah. So, so is there a place in your body right now that's relatively quiet? Oh, yeah, I was picking. I was noticing places. So can you, can you name one for us? <laughs> like the, the back of the knee. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So there's a little bit of easing in the back of your knee. Okay. Anywhere else? <laughs> yeah and so as I was going so I had the back of the knee and then I was like oh well pinky toe's not doing anything uh-huh okay oh the inside of the upper arm that's just not doing anything so yeah but just to actually have answers to it so yeah and what happens when you keep noticing a little more ease as you go on uh actually finding places so more places that I wasn't expecting so you could say that your system is showing more ease, right? You're experiencing a little more ease as you do it. Yeah, good. good. So we could spend hours on this, but you have this tool that you can use and it takes seconds in the middle of a crazy day. And you can be anywhere. You can be doing anything to do EMA. You can be in the middle of a performance when someone else is playing and you're in the rests, you're counting eight measures rest, you can just check in, what am I noticing? And there's no judgment whatsoever. Tristan, do you have a question? Go for it. So uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I have an understanding of my own psychological personality type. I'm an INT, INTJ with, uh, and I'm slightly neurodivergent. So I have what's, uh, uh, it's a schizoid uh, split between the mind and the body. And so uh, what I think your exercises have been invaluable for me to realize that my body is basically numb. So yeah. all the time I've tried to uh, uh try the cycle out and things like that I, I i start from this first moment in which i'm i'm everything i don't feel anything i don't feel my body at all practically mm -hmm. and so i i just want to thank you again for all of this help that it's been very uh a, a real a realization for me to to start set because i i've got the impression that we have uh, that our sensory our uh, basic uh proprioception our sensor is uh, too much weight on the side of pain. So what we what happens is that our bodies are purely. So if we have pain, so there's a threshold for pain, but not for ease and for uh, just just becoming aware that the body exists, that there is that part of your body at all. So I think th this is an extremely important point that you make uh, also about re uh, recovering a center. So uh, well, so I just 
these are these are very important points. So I, I'm working on this. So I just wanted to thank you. Uh, this is an opportunity I have to do this oh. person. So, but it's it's really I think this is a, a very important exercise. This, uh, so I just wanted okay. to give you this as a kind of feedback from a person who has. Uh, uh, my condition is specific uh, to my type. There are many people like me, and so uh, I don't know if you have other uh, students uh, in this situation. So you will realize that they'll be slower as they at the, at the first level without instruments or anything, just trying to become aware of your body. So that that's I think will yes. be slower. The learning curve will be different. Will be rather slower yes. as we try to pick up this this whole idea. So it's very transformative and so just i would just want to express my appreciation for everything oh, that you've been doing you. all of your ideas okay so oh. it was uh but i was feeling numb in the i was i started to feel my uh more or less like the lady over there about the knees and uh -huh. the, the wrists yeah. that was more or less and then my eyes i realized but I, i've got dry eyes here we've got some dry weather in brazil now mm -hmm. so Excellent. that that was but just yes, to give this you some feedback great. it's just intended Thank as you. feedback I'm so, so, so happy to hear this. It's so interesting. And yeah, I, I don't know much about personality types other than what I've experienced. And <laughs> but, you know, I'll just say that you, I think from my experience, we all have some degree of what you're describing, right? And what you're describing is extre more extreme on one side. And then there are other people that just can't stop feeling, and that's you know a problem too. And so what we're learning is really finding a balance, and and everybody is unique, and everybody's the same. I I firmly believe that whatever our you know our, our diagnoses or neuroses are, <laughs> right. And the, the thing that I love so, so much about Primal Alexander is that it really does work and it really is simple. And the simplicity is part of what makes it so powerful. And I always love to give credit where credit is due. Um, I think I put that in the cheat sheet. And by the way, if anybody doesn't have the cheat sheet yet, please go to the link in the comments on Facebook or the chat here and grab your cheat sheet. Um, but Primal Alexander was invented and is still being developed by my partner, Mio Morales, who is a master Alexander teacher. He just had his 50th <laughs> birthday of being in the Alexander world, and he really knows what he's doing. And, he, you know, he was trained traditionally and taught with his hands for decades and um, does not do that anymore because he's found you know, better ways to do that for himself and his students. And I'm finding the same thing. So uh, Mio came up with Ima and he invented the cycle, which is the next step. So the cycle is the first official primal Alexander awareness etude. And people can learn the cycle without doing Ima first, but it's, it's helpful to go through Ima first. And I'll just say that Ima is one of your best tools, even better than the cycle. If you are extremely stressed, if you're panicking, if you have very high performance anxiety and you can't think straight. When you're really in a startle fight, flight, freeze response, this part of your brain that's the control thinking command center of your brain, the prefrontal cortex, it's not going to <laughs> be able to help you as well. You're not going to be able to think of what you should do, and you're not going to be able to help yourself as much with things like the cycle and the other awareness H2s that use what we call constructive thinking. But EMA, EMA is the go-to thing. Even if you're in a startle and a fight, flight, freeze, you can pause and check in with yourself and ask, what am I noticing? And you might be like, oh, my heart is really beating really strongly. And, and you can be with that for a moment. And then, but don't get stuck. Like me, my, like Myla showed us, like, don't get stuck with one feeling, like move on, move on, move on. What else am I noticing? What else? What else? And if you practice this, regularly like that's one of the tips here on the cheat sheet use ema and pause whenever you can remember during the day just pause for a moment check in with yourself and do a few moments of ema 
it's going to be so helpful to lowering your stress levels. Okay, so you do Ema whenever you can, and if you practice it, you'll remember that you have that tool when you can't think straight. But you've got to practice, you have to build up the neurology. A big part of my work, and you're all musicians, you know you need to practice things to get better. That's true, that's the truth. You need to practice to improve. But my work is all about improving the primary instrument. And you know, it's not so much about improving. Again, I said before, it's all about, oh, let's get better. It's not so much that, it's like, can you shift your perspective to have a better experience of yourself and an easier, happier life, healthier life with more energy and vitality? I've got so much energy, it's crazy. It's really, really nice. I used to be kind of depressed as a kid, not like, clin like not clinically depressed, but maybe I was, you know, I don't know. I had very little energy and, you know, I'd go home after school and fall asleep on the floor for a couple hours or something. I had severe allergies. So I would wake up, sneeze like 50 times in a row. I'm not exaggerating. And I'd be wiped out for the whole day. I was always reading. That's all I did. <laughs> that and play the violin. That's how I got good because that's all I did. <laughs> right? But I wasn't very happy in general until I went to college and you know things started changing for me. But I'll just say nothing really changed my energy levels until I found the Alexander Technique. And it's just changed my life 100%, completely different. I can think more clearly. I don't have allergies anymore. By the way, it was Alexander Technique combined with something else that, that within two weeks, my lifelong allergies were cured. It was unbelievable, miraculous, except that it you know, really was a specific thing. It was a, an elimination rotation diet that if anybody wants to know more, just get in touch with me. But it was like a miracle. Two weeks later, I had all this energy and it was the combination of that diet and the Alexander Technique I have so much energy and it's because I keep doing it, right? <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, other things that I wanted to share as we wrap up, I taught you EMA and you can learn the cycle if you don't know it already. It's the first Primal Alexander Awareness Etude. And on this cheat sheet that you're gonna get in your inbox, use that link, um, you will get the link on the cheat sheet to learn the cycle. And you can also just Google it on YouTube or look it up on YouTube. Look for, I think I'm calling it now, the best Alexander Technique exercise. Uh, that's the new name for it. it. And I truly, you know, it's hard to say that, to claim that, but I believe it. So I'm saying it in that degree. <laughs> it's the best thing out there. So why not say it? Right? So learn the cycle. It'll take you about 15 minutes. But then when you practice it, it takes two minutes. You can also do a mini cycle if you have no time because you're between gigs or students, right? You can do just one on each finger. You don't have to go through all four and take the whole two minutes if two minutes is too long, right? Just do it. And there's a five-day challenge there on the YouTube video if you wanna do my five-day challenge and, and get help making it a habit. I dare you to do it twice a day for a week. You might not notice any, anything much happening the first day or two or whatever, but I can pretty much guarantee you do it twice a day for a week, morning, evening, or whenever, you will notice a shift and things will start getting easier. The cycle is super simple, but extremely powerful. It works on your unconscious. It's a subtle process. It's meditative, but your eyes are open and there's a little bit of movement. And um, so the cycle is a great tool to help you with holiday overwhelm or any kind of overwhelm. Um, by the way, just if you don't know, um, the way that my programs work is we start with what I've taught you today. We do the cycle. And then after the cycle, with has, which has very little movement, we start doing a little movement awareness etudes so that you, you start learning how to do constructive thinking, noticing easing, right? That kind of thinking. You start doing it with really simple little movements like this is one of them. And we build steadily on those awareness H's and you develop a simple practice from just a tiny little bit of time, right? You make it easy in the beginning. 
right? Just a little bit. But we go through a series of awareness etudes. Um, in my level one program, I have a level one self-study course where you learn the basic etudes and you learn how to do that for yourself and you get some private coaching from me. Hey, Gary, good to see you. <laughs> you get some private coaching from me. You get the level one self-study course. And I have an amazing group program with lots of resources and multiple live group classes every week that you have access to when you're a member. Um, but the level one, you don't even do much with your musical instrument at all, because it's all about this primary instrument and learning to coordinate your thinking with your body and to like I talked about earlier, to embody your experience and choose ease. So you get to have more calm, confident control over your whole self independently of your circumstances. So the holiday craziness can be what it is all around you and you can you know, move along with it, but it's more like going with the flow of it but you're at the center of the storm. So that's invaluable for performance anxiety. So many of my students lack self-confidence. They don't really feel good about their playing, even though they've been taking lessons forever, right? Maybe they've even done multiple professional degrees. I have students in top-notch orchestras and teaching at the best school. I shouldn't say the best school, there are several best schools, and I don't want to name it, I don't want to like call her out, but think of the first best school that comes to mind, you know, that I have a student on the faculty there. We all have self-confidence issues, but you don't know the professionals have it because they can show that they don't, right? <laughs> Performance anxiety. So many of my students, professionals and amateurs, are in pain, right? So, this level one course helps you realize that taking care of you and above all how you think and respond to situations gives you the power to change how you're experiencing things so that you can start feeling better right away in your mind, body, soul, emotions, spirit, your whole self. It's always your whole self. You'll start to feel better and you'll have the skills and the tools and the understanding you need to know how to practice differently so you can start playing better. My level two course is all about how you relate to your musical instrument and how you actually play it. <laughs> so usually we're on autopilot. It's like, I know how to play my violin. We do this, right? Most people do this. <laughs> That's not a good way to play. And it's a recipe for pain and frustration because you're technical. So well, right? But most of us don't realize how we're interfering with how we play. We're not aware of it because it's such a strong habit to think about your music in an intense way. And that intense, like, I mean, you love it so much, right? So you get intense, but you don't realize that causes tension. And the tension makes everything you do harder. So level two is all about discovering what you're actually doing with your instrument. And you'll have different choices that you can make. And from the tools that you got in the level one course, you get to add on and bring them into your music making. So you get to you know, learn how to actually play your instrument with that kind of centered calm and ease and confidence. If you feel confident, everything's easier, right? So the root of the, all of this is self-confidence and getting over fear. It's a big deal, right? Choosing love over fear. <laughs> it's like very simple, right? So you do that in level two with your instrument. Level three is normally just for my coaching clients. Um, so they get the practice. There's an advanced practice seminar, level three self-study course that I'm still developing. It keeps getting better. Um, and it has all kinds of cutting edge practice techniques, um, the actual nitty gritty stuff that helps you with your practice session and, um, and some of the very unique ways that I help people bring the Alexander technique and constructive thinking into like, how do you work on shifts 
how do you work on double stops? How do you bring your mallet to the vibraphone? <laughs> I mentioned the vibraphone earlier, Gary. So before you even came, I thought of you. <laughs> I was telling everyone that's the, one of the most unusual instruments I've ever worked with because it's usually the string players and occasionally, and a lot of horn players lately. Um, but yeah, so anyway, those are the, the that's the progression that I take my, you know, my coaching students through the, without the instrument, ease with the instrument and ease and then how do you actually do what you're doing to bring your technique and artistry to this incredible you know level of possibility so i wish every musician had this i wish the famous musicians that play so incredibly well already could learn this because they would just be like out of this world if they knew how to do constructive thinking while they're playing it's this, there's nothing else like this. So I'm going to wrap up now, but before you go, please make sure you have the cheat sheet. Okay, if you came on late, go to the comments, go to the chat in the Facebook group, grab your cheat sheet. You get all my notes from today, plus some really important links. There's a lot of extra stuff. Like I have a whole section of more tips to help you with holiday overwhelm. Um, like adopting magnanimous selfishness, like slowing down, like learning to say a positive no instead of a negative yes, um, what to do when you get pain, negative thoughts or emotions, um, prepare for events early, improve your sleep, eat well, and get your day off to a great start, hug and smile, and check out my YouTube channel. It's all on here. <laughs> and then, um, just to wrap up, this is really important. Don't leave yet if you're about to leave. Okay, I want you to know that if you've never worked with me before, um, I really want you to. <laughs> so, so I am running a special winter edition of my Musician's Mind Body Breakthrough, and it's going to be focused on claim your confidence. Like I said, building self-confidence and not having self-confidence at a deep level is a major root of all the struggles you may be having as a musician and in your life. So Claim Your Confidence is this special 30-day program coming up and you get to choose your start date, right? You can choose, you can start anytime between now and January 1st, or you can start on April 1st or later, you know, th those are the two options. So, you know, having the time, that's not an issue. If you want, to do this and you want 25% off, which is a lot, sign, just let me know. Okay. So on your cheat sheet, it tells you exactly what to do. And it tells you all this information. Just get in touch with me. Um, tell me you want the 25 discount, 25% 25 discount, and you want information. Obviously you don't know yet if you want it yet. <laughs> so, so write to me and ask me about this special program coming up for claiming your confidence that you want the 25% off, tell me who you are. If I don't know you, what's your instrument? Are you professional or non-professional? I don't really care. Everybody's welcome, um, but I want to know <laughs> so I can send you the right information, right? And let me know what you're struggling with. If you have pain or performance anxiety or any other issues um, or like technical issues with your instrument that you want help with, um, just let me know. I mean, tell me anything else that you want me to know to, that might be getting in the way of your best performance. So just send me an email if you're interested and um, I would love to help you. It's a 30 day program that has the things that I just mentioned. Um, you get private coaching with me, a session, you get the level one course and you get an, a lot of benefits in my group membership with lots of live sessions, a huge resource of video videos in the video archive, um, just lots of stuff. And it's so nice to see three people here right now who've done my intro course. <laughs> and some of you have done much more. So thank you for being here. And Tristan, I'm so happy to meet you. I, again, I so much appreciate the, the things that you've sent me recently. It's been so kind of you. And Marion, thank you. It's so nice to have you. Marion, uh, was my younger son's violin teacher for many years. And it's thanks to Marion that he is now becoming a professional violinist. I mean, it's thanks to me too, but <laughs> mother can't do it alone, I tell you. <laughs> so 
Marion kept him going when he was really seriously sick for two years and he could only go to her violin group classes on the Saturdays. He had no other contact with kids because he couldn't go to regular school, even though he was well, but he had missed so much school because of illness that they wouldn't let him back in. So he had to do online high school for two years, which was really tough. And Marion had an amazing program and they went to Carnegie Hall and everything. So shout out to Marion. <laughs> So thank you everybody so, so, so much for being here. I will be sending you the replay if you're on my email list. You are now on my email list if you grabbed your cheat sheet. If you haven't done it yet, please get it. And you can share this replay. You can share this. You can share anything um, that I've you know given you today with anybody. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, whatever. Um, I'm so grateful when you share my stuff. And um, I really, again, I wish more musicians knew about this because it's so powerful. So I don't even know who is, who else is here. There are other people that I don't see. Um, XT says, thank you so much. You're very inspirational. I'm so glad. Thank you for being here and saying so. Um, respond by Sunday, December 11th, not 9th. Ooh, there's always some mistake, right? <laughs> thank you for catching that, Myla. <laughs> Yeah, respond by Sunday. You've got time. You don't have to resp respond by the end of today, although that's even better. <laughs> right? At least I didn't say respond by December 25th, right? <laughs> okay, thank you all so much. And I do hope that you can pause throughout your day, catch yourself in overwhelm, just be with yourself for a moment and notice that you have ease inside of you. You just need to want to get in touch with it. So listen to your body, find that ease, learn how to do the cycle and just have fun with whatever you're doing. Be present as much as you can. And if that's not solving all your problems, reach out to me because I have a lot more that can help you. <laughs> so thanks, take care. I'll see you all next time. Be well and write to me. Bye. <laughs>